Hi everyone, welcome to a bit of a different style video. If you've been following the channel lately, you may have noticed a uh, certain model I uploaded a few weeks ago, a Citroën DS model. It was the largest and most complex I'd ever built, and I was really, really proud of it. Um, but after assembling it, I started to look more into the actual car, kind of looking on Wikipedia at details and such, and I realized that there were quite a few big oversights in the design that I made. Um, and so pretty, pretty soon afterward, I started to think about ways that I could improve it, and I eventually started working on an entirely new model. I haven't turned into a full model with bodywork like I did with the previous one, but I have created a rolling chassis, and this video is a document of the building process of that rolling chassis. I started with the engine, which on the previous model was mounted laterally and on the real car it's longitudinal. So here was my new model, and you can see that the pistons have the correct firing order. One and four fire at the same time, two and three at the same time. It also has a timing chain and a clutch at the front of it. Uh, I thought it was very important to have this style clutch in the car rather than a pedal clutch, because the real Citroën DS had a semi-automatic without a clutch. I also compared it to images of the real engine to make sure that the single overhead camshaft was in the right place and that the overall proportions of the engine were correct. On day two I added suspension and steering at the front. I made sure to give it a caster angle, which was a missed opportunity on the previous model. This also meant putting the steering pivots in a bit of an odd place, but I managed to get it to work without bump steer. On day three, I did a lot of work to get a gearbox into the front of the car, in front of the engine, as is on the real Citroën, but even more difficult was getting a working column shifter to work. You can see that the lever next to where the steering wheel would be moves this uh, complicated set of actuators which changes the gears. It actually works reasonably well. I also added an anti-roll bar and some basic suspension this day. On day four, I attached the steering wheel to the front uh, steering system. This includes two steering racks, one for actually moving the wheels, and you can see another one in the front there, which will be uh, used in a later stage for something else. I also added wheels, stiffened up the suspension, and extended the chassis toward the rear, where I added a realistic suspension system with its own anti-roll bar. Here you can see the entire model in motion. I'm really pleased with the way the column shifter actually works, and you're able to see the pistons moving at different speeds depending on which gear is selected. On day five, I built the monocoque or unibody chassis of the Citroën DS. Just like the real car, this is a sort of single structural um, unit which stresses the entire car and was quite revolutionary for the time. I also built this kind of semblance of an exhaust system uh, at the bottom of the car. On day six, I wanted to address some of the problems with the steering system. These ball joints in particular were very fragile, so I added a bit of reinforcement uh, on each of the corners. Uh, I also finally added the swiveling headlights, which I hinted at earlier. That's what that secondary gear rack is used for, and they work quite well. However, there was quite some load going through the steering system at this point, so using the steering wheel wasn't a viable option anymore. So I extended the steering shaft backwards and added some hand of God steering near the trunk. 